Hi, I'm Sapentia. This is very introductory statistics course for beginners. T-test 3. G-test. Don't hurry up. In prior class, we're talking about the T-test. And uh, I said we need to compare mean difference and standard deviation. If mean difference is sufficiently smaller than standard deviation, we could decide that this difference is occurred by chance. But if mean difference is sufficiently larger than standard deviation, we could decide that this difference is not occurred by chance. So I said we need to back to the basic of statistics. That is, statistics is a magic of variance. So today, we will start this magic a little bit. Um, finally, the t-test is a statistical decision process, but we just decide how large the ratio of mean difference to, the st to standard deviation is. Okay, so let's get started. Magic of variance. But we cannot start right now the t-test. Why? The first reason is that we must know the normal distribution. We should understand normal distribution before t-test. Actually, the t-test and g-test, here g-test means a kind of a test based on the normal distribution. These two are very close. And originally, the root of these two tests are same. So, we should learn the normal distribution at this stage, that is g-test. But what is for g-test and what is for t-test? Um, you remember the population and sample in prior class, maybe. I said the population is for this whole people, okay? This is population. And the sample is a part of these people. So the sample is a part of a population. When uh, we have a population, we can do g-test. However, if we have a sample, we just only do t-test. So, g-test is for population data, and t-test is for sample data. Okay, but before going to the t-test, we start from the g-test in this class. Okay, this is a normal distribution. If you have any experience on the statistics class, maybe you have seen this picture, normal distribution. But in most classes, I think uh, uh, teachers just to set up, a, hey, this is normal distribution and next. But I will um, check one by one the unique feature of normal distribution, okay? This is a normal distribution, and uh, the shape is like a bell shape, okay? And this is the center of the normal distribution. We have mu. Mu is mean, okay? So the center is mean, and the left and right side, right side are symmetrical, okay? And one more. In this case, this one, this distance is sigma, standard deviation. So from mean, one standard deviation. From mean, one standard deviation. So this blue area, okay, this blue area is uh, from mu minus one standard deviation to mu plus one standard deviation, okay? And 
one standard deviation and two standard deviations. So blue and green areas are plus minus two standard deviation from mean. Finally, three standard deviations are blue, green, and red area. Okay? But here, what is the meaning of the, this normal dist distribution? Let me see one by one. Okay. The feature of a normal distribution is first that is bell shape, I said. And the center is a mean and is a symmetrical shape. And the end of the both sides in a normal distribution is not zero. I mean, the left side and right side, it is not zero. Okay? And normal distribution is defined by a mean and standard deviation. Because, as you can see here, we just need to know two information. That is mean and standard deviation. Okay, if you have any number of mean and standard deviation, you can draw a normal distribution with a kind of some stat software. Okay, and because of these features, we have infinite numbers of normal distributions. Okay, with the different numbers of mean and standard deviation. There are so many normal distributions in the world. But here, the major point you must understand is the size or area below normal distribution is the probability. What does it mean that? Here, okay, um, we have a blue, green, and red area. However, uh, there are very, very small area, maybe here and here. Anyway, anyway, the below line of the normal distribution, like uh, I mean this line, below these lines are, the areas are probability. As you know, probability is ranged from 0 to 1. So, the sum of all area below this line is 1. Okay? 1. And as I said, this is center, right? Mu. So, the left side is 0.5, right side is 0.5. Because this normal distribution is symmetrical. Okay? Um, so, if you wanted to find the, the probability, we should integrate the normal distribution. However, as you know, it is impossible for us. But the next, I will show a kind of uh, some solutions. Okay. Here, we have a new normal distribution. That is a standard normal distribution. Sometimes we standardize the normal distribution anyway. Standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is defined as a normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation is 1. Like this. Okay. So, if a normal distribution has a zero mean and one standard deviation, we call it standard normal distribution. But why do we know the standard normal distribution? Mm -hmm. As I said, there are lots of normal distributions with a, with a different mean and standard deviation. And we cannot integrate all of them for find out uh, probability. Anyway, so what? Here, I made a, an example of 
standard normal distribution. So here we will learn how to use the standard normal distribution and what is the G test. Okay. So I will let you know how to use. First, we have a, a example and question. For example, we take a mathematics exam for 1,000 freshmen. And 1,000 freshmen's math score was approximately normal. It means that it followed the normal distribution shape, okay? And here we have a two value, mean and standard deviation. The mean value was 82, okay? And standard deviation is 5. So, okay, we have a normal distribution with a mean value is 82 and standard deviation is 5, okay? Anyway. So here we have a question. How many students are between 82 and 90? 82 and 90. So based on the normal distribution, our normal distribution, the 82 is here, mean, okay? This is mean value, so the, it is the center, right? And 82 is somewhere maybe here. And between 82 and 90, this is a red area, means the between 82 and 90, right? Okay, so, as you can see here, the left picture is the normal distribution with the mean 82, standard deviation 5. And the red area is uh, between 82 and 90. So, if we integrate this red area, not read area, sorry, this is typo, typo. Red area, we can find the probability between 82 and 90. And we take the number probability, we can multiply 1000 and then we can find the, num the number of students between 80 to 90. Can you follow me? Okay. So here, let's think about the normal distribution. As I said, it is impossible to integrate our normal distribution. It is insane. So our strategy is just to change our normal distribution to standard normal distribution. How? Okay, let me see here. This one is our normal distribution. The mean value is 82 and 90 is somewhere here. And we want to know this area. Okay. And we want to change this normal di distribution to standard normal distribution. So we parallelized here standard normal distribution. The mean value is zero. So 82 is matched zero, maybe like this picture. But we don't know the number of standard normal distributions here matched with 90 in our normal distribution. So we need, to, we need to find this number, right? So here, we need to change our numbers, our mass scores to standard normal distribution number. That is G-score. G-score is X minus mu, this is mean value, right? and divided by sigma. This is a standard deviation. So here, let me see. We have uh, two numbers, 82 and 90. So G-score, 82's G-score is 82 minus 82 because mean is 82 and divided by 5 is 0, right? So this number is changed to 0. Yeah, right, because the center is mean. And next, 90 G-score here, 90, this number G-score is changed to 90 minus 82 divided by 5, and this is 1.6. So it means that this number is 1.6.
And what is the next? Okay, here we uh, changed our mass score to mass score to standard normal distribution numbers like a G-score. We call it G-score. But, and what is the next? That is a G-table. G-table is uh, already made by statisticians um, because they want to help us. Of course, uh, sometimes uh, it is very difficult. Anyway, this G-table, Z-table, is very helpful for you understand and find out some numbers. This is a G-table, Z-table, okay? Maybe you can uh, find this picture on tables uh, uh, from Google. Let me see one by one. As you can see here, there is a number. There are numbers, okay? This is a normal distribution, standard normal distribution, because the mean value is zero here, center is zero, as you can see here, right? This is center, center is zero, and the standard deviation is one. And this table has some numbers. Anyway, if the G-score is 1, this table shows the area of from left side to this number. So these numbers means the probability of this red area. Okay. So let me see. How to read the G table? Um, first, this column shows the first decimal. Okay, first decimal is here. And the second decimal point are here. So if you find a point to five, no, point to five, yeah, okay, point to five. Point two is here and going to five. Point to five is 58, nine, uh, 5,987. What does it mean that? 2.5 may be here. So 2.5, 2.5. Um, sorry. 2.5 is 5,897. So point 2.5 is maybe about here. Okay, about maybe this is half and quarter is here okay here so from left side to point to five the area is about uh, 59.87 right so let me see in our uh, case um, we can integrate our normal distribution, so we change our numbers to uh, G-score, right? And uh, we find uh, the our G-score is from 0 to 1.6, okay? And we we need to find a 1.6 here, okay? 1.60, 94, 58, uh, 52, right? So if we uh, use this probability here, uh, the first problem is, uh, as you can see this picture, our G table just include the left all side. However, we don't need the left side. So we just minus 0.5, okay? Because this left side, whole left side is just a half of the probability, so 0.5. And finally, this area's probability is 0.4452. And multiply 1,000, it means that about 445 students are between 82 and 90, right? One more question. How many students over 95 points? 
this is our normal distribution and this is a point uh this this is 95 point very small number maybe because the probability is very small here the g score of 95 is 95 minus 82 divided by 5 is 2.6 if you find uh 2.6 2.60 is 90 90 53 but this number is whole left side. So we just one minus this number is our probability. Okay. And multiply one size on that is about for student. So it means that in our math uh, exam, about only four students have, uh, have uh, over 95 points. Okay. That is this test. Okay, the test just to use the G score. We just uh, uh, change our numbers to G score and use G table, right? Here, changing the value to G score is sometimes we call it G transformation or standardization. The meaning of this uh, equation is, let me see here, we just uh, calculate the difference between x, x is our value, x and mean. So this is a distance. And divide by standard deviation. So it means that how long distance between x and mean per one standard deviation. Okay, the base to one standard deviation, how long distance between x and mean. And uh, one unique feature of G-score is uh, this G-score is unitless. There is no unit. So sometimes we call it as a standardization. Okay. Um, finally, however, and so what? Okay. Uh, we know what is the G-test and G-table. And regardless with the normal distribution, what should we do next? Okay, the reason I first start from the G table and G uh, test is the basic process is the same in T test. Remember, as you know, the area below a normal distribution is the probability. Okay, but we must know what is this probability? Why do we know this probability? So we need to get back to the first class. I said the statistical decision making is like this question. What is the probability that a event is occurred by chance? Here, this probability, this probability is the same as the area below a normal distribution, you know? So it means that our question, what is the probability that a event is occurred by chance? Is answered by the normal distribution or other di distributions in statistics. So far, you just know normal distribution. It means that Likewise, we find a kind of some area, the probability, you can find that probability and apply the probability to this question, okay? So, what was the purpose of the t-test in our first example, t-test first class? At the time, our question is, what is the probability that mean height of two colleges are same by chance. Probability, same by chance. This was our purpose and question of the t-test. In other words, what is the probability that mean difference? Here, the mean difference was 1.4 centimeter was occurred just by chance. 
we must know this probability and the t-test will let us know this probability. Of course, in next class, we will learn the t-test, but when we do t-test, we will use different distribution, not normal distribution. Okay, I will stop here today. T-test 3 equals G-test. Don't hurry up. Thank you.